Betty's bombshells behind the scenes for Elvis sucks vampire themed burlesque burlesque um at the always lounge so we have dandy dillinger here live from new york city the gorgeous dandy dillinger so hello quest hello hello so i put some questions together for us um that i actually had my staff help me right i was like well what do the kids ask what do they want to know about you i don't I, know i'm I, not I, a kid I know you, I know you but I, i'm sure i could learn more <laughs> so was there let me put the little volume up was there a specific event or influential person or moment that called you to become a burlesque performer? Um, I, so I started going to burlesque shows at the original Dwayne Park in New York City yes, yes. when it was down in Tribeca. And it was when I was still had one of my kitchen jobs and every Friday after service, we would go and we'd watch the late show at Dwayne Park. And it was nice. Brian Newman or Melody Sweets would be the jazz musician and it would be these beautiful girls. So then when I left my first job, I needed a creative outlet and I wanted to be a beautiful, sparkly person too. So I would you have joined success? the New York School of Burlesque and started doing burlesque. Amazing, amazing. I already know this, but for the fans, uh, which era of burlesque do you enjoy portraying the most? <laughs> this can be um, more specific to you. <laughs> I tend to lean more towards the 20s and 30s style of burlesque. Um, I try to recreate a Ziegfeld Folly-esque type of atmosphere. Or I like to go Weimar and do a little bit of Anita Berber, mm -hmm. um, something a little darker. Or I like to go whimsical and do something a little bit Art Nouveau. So I kind of fall in that balance of all different <laughs> 20s and 30s uh, genres. Uh -huh. And then you're going to be rocking some Art Deco for this particular show that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm producing. What okay, top three bands to dance to even at home? Um Foreigner. Uh -huh. Um I don't know. You should have asked this question ahead of time. So yeah, I, I know. Say. I'm gonna catch you, girl. I gotta catch you in the moment. I mean, does it have to be a band? I've lately I've been feeling Louis Jordan. I've been doing right. a lot of Louis Jordan. Um yeah i i i'm stuck right now all right we can move I, on. We can we can we can yeah can we'll move on your brain that. as we move on you're like <laughs> i have to say this okay uh two top red flags in a romantic relationship um lying mm, agree and being unsupportive there that, that's yeah okay i'm with you on that what is this is for me. What is the most exhilarating moment for you as a performer during your performance? Um, I enjoy when the audience responds, whether it be during a tassel twirl or at the end of the act or during a certain reveal. Like I get energy from the audience like actors would on stage. So if it's a really quiet room and I can hear my costume pieces hitting the ground and I can hear my shoes going across the stage. It makes me feel super uncomfortable. And then I get completely taken out of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's ooing and eyeing and applause, then that is what makes me realize that like, I, I enjoy doing this and there's a reason yeah. why I'm here. They're bringing you into the present moment and you're joining on that. They're You're aligning with them. Yeah, yeah. There's a siren going through. Welcome to New York City. Yeah, welcome to New Orleans. And I'm, my store is open at the same time. So I'm like trying to shut everyone up while we're talking. Okay. Ha! Um, For me, okay, another one. Which kinds of feelings do you experience when performing? Um. So lately I've been getting very high when I perform. Ah. Um. Are we and, talking about weed, Dandy? Yes. Okay, so Dandy. And now, this is really, no longer a PG uh, interview. Well, right. I'm just saying. So 
It's New York. It's it's legal. It's it's so I don't get in my head when I perform. I love music so much. And a lot of what I strive my acts on is the musicality of right. hitting the pieces and the motions with the sounds and the music and the beats. And so yeah. when I'm high, instead of like drinking to relax, Okay. If I get high before I perform, I don't focus on the choreography or the costume. I just listen to the music and it helps oh. me dance and move better with the song. Well, that and makes so, a lot of sense because alcohol, yeah. the way that the, it, it, it could, it could take away from your performance and not have you be in touch. And if you, if it resonates with you for, for you know marijuana that it relaxes you and you feel more fluid and connected it, it does make sense you know so there's so there's that that i've been feeling lately but it also um it's kind of a power play as well like when you're on a stage and everybody in that room is watching you on stage you have yeah. everybody Leo, Leo, in your hand Leo. <laughs> you have the control over how they're going to react okay with what you're doing on stage And I, I kind of like that because no matter, you know, what's going on, you still like everybody's there for you and you can use that to your advantage by going faster or slower or more teasing more or whatever is that's the power play with the audience. And let's just mention that Dandy Dellinger is a Leo. (laughs) (laughs) That was Leo energy that last Um, time. What Leo energy is that I'm. (laughs) actually stunning it's absolutely gorgeous i love what's going on behind you it's totally it's totally you um are there certain characters you emulate when performing where do you draw your inspiration when developing your characters or acts um i think this goes back to my performance style of the 20s and 30s um i definitely most of my acts are very um, chiffon and like fabric based. And so when I do more of like an Art Nouveau style act, I like to almost imagine that I'm like floating and moving with the fabric and that that is my tempo through the act is the way that the fabric moves. Um, And I get inspired by art constantly like Erte we've talked about is one of my favorite artists especially for inspiration when it comes to burlesque this and is then, I very much yeah. mine. and that's so what yeah I'm doing Mucha for- and Erte oh. are definitely my uh two biggest art inspirations I love Mucha so much I love whenever you in your stories you post Mucha and I'm like that's my girl <laughs> yeah, we got we got some over here Love, Luca, love, 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 love. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 the fact that you love to emulate those eras that is so what's in alignment with people in New Orleans, whether they realize it or not. So I'm the exclusive retailer for Best Made Cosmetics, and anytime I show the customers a shade when I'm when I'm styling them, and they're not even fam- familiar with certain time periods or anything like that, but I just look at them and I style them in the 20s and 30s. They have such a proclivity towards it; they they can't even explain it themselves. So they're very attracted to it in New Orleans. And then, of course, it's my style. It's one of my many styles, as you know. I'm I'm a lover of Klimt and. But this air thing, uh, the Erte, I'm so, so, so excited. I, I've been working on this project for a while and they're hand beaded. And I know I've shown you this personally, you know, but that's, you know, privately, but I'm going to be debuting the pieces for this show. And it's it's very exciting and exhilarating because for me, I see um, so many people want to take a spin off of the whole spider thing. And I, to me, it looks very cheesy and I never want to um, curtail to that or be absorbed by the cheesiness but this is air tag and I'm going to do it my way. And it's going to give the goth, you know, the gothic and twenties and thirties flapper era and air tag. And just to bring his work to life. A lot of people actually don't know who he is. When I talk to my customers about it, they have no idea. Uh, 
So to bring, I know it's it's, it's like a must, it's a it's terrible. <laughs> so to bring the father of Art Deco back to life is a it's definitely it's a duty and it's a pleasure. You know, I love it. Yeah. So we're gonna and, do it together but, and a company with my headdresses. Yes, yes, that's another thing that we're gonna be talking about. So Miss Danny Dillinger, uh, I've been asking her for a while now to collaborate because her headdresses are incredible and because we jive together on these uh twenties and thirties artists and aesthetics and designs. So she's going to um we'll be debuting these beautiful headdresses at Betty's Bombshells Nola. Uh, with my Erte designs and uh, it's going to be a wonderful collaboration. I'm, I'm so excited to to do this with you. I'm really excited to debut it. Um, yeah. Let's hear, what is your favorite or signature dance move? Um, I would say that my signature dance move is um, shimmying off my dress with my butt. <laughs> I think, I think it's my favorite too. <laughs> um but but um I've been squatting a little much lately and my butt is almost a little too big to have it wiggle off I gotta Wait, I can help you, you yeah, spend a little time in New Orleans <laughs> and I'll help you jiggle honey because the food in New Orleans causes a lot of trouble it's made my dress size expand <laughs> I have to get you some char grilled oysters and some French 75 uh, so well, well, you. well you're coming here really soon and I, I have to treat you to that um okay if there's actually there's actually two more if that's okay if okay. there's one thing you could change about burlesque as an art form what would it be um i would have people not take it so seriously i agree leave the drama out leave the right. politics out I agree. we're just strippers who want to dress up and take our clothes off hallelujah and i i just it's become so much more than that, it which has. is a good thing, but it's also, I think, Annoying. the downfall Annoying. of it. And the there's scene. a lot of performers who just want to be sparkly and take our clothes off. And right. we, it's hard to figure out where you fit sometimes. I 100% agree with you. I follow so many burlesque. I've been producing for a while now of uh, some really fabulous burlesque acts from, I like to really help people that are starting just out and then people that, you know, we help each other, like people like, you know, Dirty Martini who want to just be a part of the action and we get along and it's, she's an incredible, she's been an incredible part of, of my work as, you know, as well as you and as May and, and I'm excited now I'm expanding to Juno here and she, she's involved with the Joy Theater and she does, you know, Josephine Baker acts and yeah, it's, 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 I just agree with you. Some people do take it too seriously. I was actually giving advice. There's um a young burlesque act who came in here yesterday and she asked for advice. And I said, just don't, don't, you know, go do what you do and don't tell everyone you're new, just do it and enjoy it and love it, you know, and don't worry about being new because it doesn't matter. It's about just focus on your craft, you know? Yeah. If you're having fun and you're, you know, you're being respectful and have, you know, all the power to you. So what's one piece of advice you'd like to give aspiring burlesque dancers? Don't try to fit into the bubble that you think burlesque is supposed to be. Amen. Become your own performer. And it's like, yes, I do fit this vintage vibe and I do the twenties and thirties and I'm taking inspiration from, you know, past like, um, performers of in history. But if you try to be a carbon copy of other performers, right. then you're never going to fully be comfortable with who you are as mm -hmm. a performer. You won't realize your full potential and your individuality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. Everything you said is amazing. Yeah, find find your niche. My niche happens to be putting shit on my head <laughs> and dressing in vintage. So and it works out well. That's why I'm flying you. <laughs> and you being a, a slow burn, being a a prancer, not a dancer, as hey, I like to say. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Well. I believe this is all my questions. Is there anything you would like to say about being involved in my current production? Is there anything you want to say? 
Um, I'm excited to be back in New Orleans. I'm excited to be back in New Orleans this time of year. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see these new dresses in person because the illustration that they are inspired by is gorgeous. Thank you. So it should be a fun show all around. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me. And uh, we'll be sharing this with Betty's Bombshells uh, customers and music fans of my music. So it's going to be a great time. I can't wait to have you here. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Bye.